Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And in this video, we're going to look at a generalization of the Neyman Pearson Limit. Now, the Neyman Pearson Limit has been generalized in so many different areas of statistics and mathematics that really this is just one of those many. So let's let x be uh, distributed with some distribution f of x given theta where theta is the parameter, lives in a parameter space omega. And here we're pointing out that we have m plus 1 thetas that live in this parameter space that we're going to use in this theorem. And let's suppose that m of them satisfy this equation. So the expected value of our test function, given that one of those theta i's, where i goes from 1 to m, equals ci. Now, phi is a test function, and x, our data, lives in some sample space. S is the sample space. Now, if our test function is this, so it's a 1 if this value of our density, you know, given the true value is m theta plus 1, is greater than this linear combination of the other m, you know, thetas and ki's, you know, it equals 1, and it equals 0 if this value is less than that linear combination. Now, the ki's have to be positive, or non-negative. Uh, then it maximizes the expected value of our test function, given that theta m plus 1 is true. And so this is like saying that it maximizes the power. Now let's prove it. Now, oh, what makes this an extension? Well, in the Neyman Pearson lemma, there's what's there's only one side condition that the value of the test function under the null hypothesis is equal to alpha, you know, or some value. And here there's m side conditions instead of just one. And so that's the generalization of the Neyman Pearson lemma. So the proof goes like this. Now, first of all, you have, we first of all have to prove that a test exists. And and, it's, and I'm, I'm kind of cheating here, but the existence of a test that maximizes this expected value is a direct application of the weak compactness theorem. Basically, you state it, and boom, there's proof. And so I'm going to point you to the weak compactness theorem, but then promise that, um, you know, for this proof, we're going to skip the details because it's true, but we'll cover the weak compactness theorem in great detail in another video. But it does show that a test exists that maximizes that expected value. So now, so once we know one that exists, let's prove that this test right here is the one that maximizes that value. So that's our that's the goal now. So let's let phi star be a test function such that. It satisfies the side condition, sort of. Okay, so remember, this is our original test function. This is our side conditions, and we're making them equal to CI, right? So in our proof, we could say that this test function, such that it meets all the side conditions, so we could say equal to, So, but we're going a step farther in this proof and saying that they only have to be less than or equal to that CI. They don't have to all, all be equal. Okay, And this will actually play a part in some later proofs that we're going to do. So that's why I wanted to throw that in there and kind of point out that little subtlety. So it meets all the side conditions, you know, sort of. And then we're going to create three sets. We're going to uh, create three mutually exclusive disjoint sets of our sample space, S minus, S0 and S plus. Now such that if the X's live in S minus, then this difference is negative. It's minus, you know. Um, if the X's are in S0, then the difference of these test functions is zero. And if, it, and if the X's live in S plus, then the difference of these test functions is positive. Okay, so we're going to create these three subsets. And, and so these three sets will change depending upon what test function we use, 
but the structure and the idea of S minus, S0, and S plus stay the same. It deals with the difference of these tests. Now, one thing to remember, phi is, our, is the test that we think creates this maximum value or maximum power. And it only takes on values 0 and 1. And a test function can only take on values between, you know, and including 0 and 1. And so the, the new test function phi has to have values between these two, right? That's the only way that it can be zero or positive, etc. Right? So I just want to point out that little subtlety. So now, if x lives in S plus, that means that difference is positive. The only way that can happen is if our original test function is 1, which means that the condition here is met. Now this is a shortcut notation. F of m plus 1 really means f of x given that the true theta value is theta m plus 1. And then, you know, of course, ki is ki. It's a constant uh, non-negative. F of i means f of x given that theta i is the true parameter. Then we're going to, and if x is in s minus, the only way that can happen is if our original test function is 0 which says that it meets this condition, right? The inequality has changed. So now let's look at this integral here. So we're taking the integral over the entire sample space of this difference times this difference and then dx, you know, where dx is a vector, which means over the entire sample space. Now, as a reminder, S is really the union of these disjoint sets, but that means that this is always greater than or equal to zero. And here's why. So if we're in the region that we're in S minus, that means this difference is minus, which then this difference is minus. So if you look at this, it's negative. So you have a negative times a negative, which is positive. And you take that integral, it's positive. So if we're in S zero, well, it says that this is zero. And the integral of 0 is 0. And if we're in the region S plus, that means this is positive, And this condition is met. So this has to be positive. So it's positive times a positive. And we're integrating. So it's positive. So this integral has to be greater than or equal to 0. So now in the next step, let's... Um, Oh, so, so that says that this piece is greater than or equal to zero. That's what we just showed. But now let's multiply this function into this equation, and that's what this is, right? Then we multiply this times this difference, but then take it to the other side, and that's what this is, okay? Now, and when we come down, we take this function times this test function, which is here, and using shorthand notation. This times that, we get this. Now, over here, um, we're going to roll out this sum. So let's, let's just look at I equal 1. So it's K1, F1 times each of those. But the K1 can be kind of brought out between you know this difference, right? So then we have the F1 times phi, and then minus F1 times phi star. So that's, right? And then it's plus, and it's plus, plus, plus for each index i. And then eventually we get to m, so that's km. And we just do the same thing. That's km. Then this is F of m times phi, and then minus F of m times phi star. Right? So that's this difference here. So then, uh, we take this here, so the K1 is here, and um, we just bring each down. So this is really the expected value of our test function, given that theta1 is true, right? And then minus, and this is the expected value of our test function phi star, given that theta1 is true. Right, and then plus, 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 all the way to m, this is km, this is expected value, and then minus expected value. But this has to be 
uh, greater than or equal to zero. And But why is that? Well, all the k's are positive. That was part of the conditions of the theorem. But this expected value equals c1, and this expected value was less than or equal to c1. So it could be zero, or it could be positive. And we can say the same thing for each of those. This is positive, and this value that was required to be equal to cm, and this value was required to be less than or equal to cm, so this is, you know, it's non-negative. So this sum is non-negative. Right, So that says this equation here is greater than or equal to zero. So let's bring that down. So this right here says it's the expected value of our test function given that theta m is the true value. That's what this is. And then we're going to take this to the other side. And that's the expected value of our test function phi star given that theta m plus 1 is the true value. But but this is what we wanted to show, that no matter what test function that we pick, this one is always the biggest, right? It's maximized at that particular phi. That's what we wanted to show, so the, the theorem is proven. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.